You need to pay attention to daily moves in the share price, but you also need to take care of your long-term strategy. So how can you convince investors not to be so concerned about the hit to EBITDA from this loyalty program? Uh, I think by spending more time with them. Mm. I mean, it's been a lot to absorb yesterday. We've announced spectacular results. We've announced a new logo for our core, a new name for the loyalty program, a new content. So we've done a hell of a job with the employees, with the clients, with the hotel owners. They were all very happy about it. What was a shock yesterday is announcing that it's going to cost 15 million year one, 15 million year two. What they actually lacked paying attention to is going to bring 60, 70 million year three, year four. So I just need to sit down, which is what I'm doing with you today, <laughs> which I'm going to be doing this afternoon and Monday and Tuesday in Boston, Chicago, New York Roadshow. It's just for me to basically share the news with them that I guess we've been stone age when it came to loyalty program. Mm -hmm. We're now basically getting, getting something which is more universe ecosystem in which rooms is part of the loyalty program, but only a part of it. So you're going to have additional services, concierge, next co-working, many other things. So just a question of pedagogy and education. <laughs> and in, in that education, those conversations that you have with investors, what will you be telling them about future dividends and whether they'll be affected by the investment program? No, they won't be. What I've been telling them ever since for the last five years is every year we've been surpassing expectations. Every year we've been having record revenues, EBITDA, cash flow growth. And that's going to continue not even despite that additional 50 million. So it's a very wise investment. It is very manageable cost. Uh, it's going to be creating enormous value for the shareholders, creating enormous value for re top revenues for this company. It's going to have more stickiness with our customers and, uh, and employees. So it's just something that I guess you have to invest today to get to more revenues. This is what we've been doing for the last 50 years, and it paid off for the last 50 years. So I'm so sorry it happened last night, yesterday in the market. I'm going to be watching very clearly what's going to be happening today and Monday and Tuesday. And I'm going to spend all the time necessary to make sure that they all understand it is a very good, wise decision on behalf of shareholders for the medium to long term run. Mm -hmm. And we must and we have to do it. The good news about it is the market understood that I guess there is low hanging fruits within our core who could create revenues in the next two to three years that we didn't deal with before. So it's actually good news that within what we do internally, we can create those pocket of 60, 70 million additional EBDA in the next three to four years to come with a very small investment cost base. Mm. So, OK, I understand the reassuring message you're trying to give investors. Let's talk a little bit about uh, some of the risks. Where are you turning for the most promising growth prospects, given the political and economic uncertainty that's gripping a lot of your key markets? Well, we're going big in Asia Pacific. Mm -hmm. uh, we open almost one hotel every day now. So over 300 hotels a year. Half of those are in Asia Pacific. A lot of it in Southeast Asia and Malaysia and Indonesia and Australia. We go big in South America, Chile, Peru, Colombia, Brazil. We're going big now in Sub-Saharan Africa. We are very strong in Europe, all over Europe. Eastern Europe is very solid. The good news about ACO today, since we sold the real estate last year, we are hyper diversified. The biggest countries of ACO is still France. It's 20 percent of the entire, basically, uh, prospect, uh, the entire EBDA contribution of ACO. It was 55 percent when I started five years ago. So, and Paris alone is only 4 percent. So, whatever happened to Paris, or whatever happened to London, or whatever happened to San Paulo, would be probably two or three percent impact on ACO globally. So, so since it is very diversified, I know some country is going to have some geopolitical unforeseen event, maybe some GDP unforeseen event. It doesn't matter at the end. What I may lose in Paris, I will gain in Sao Paulo. What I may lose in Nairobi, I will gain it in Melbourne. So we are basically equipped to weather any storm. You talked about co-working earlier, and I just want to bring this up because I find it really interesting, uh, this trend in co-working spaces yeah. and whether actually hotel operators um, have more of an advantage there over people starting co-working spaces from scratch because you understand how to manage all the logistics. How much energy are you putting into that specific part of the business at Accor? Well, uh, it, I would say not enough. Uh, mm. We have a joint venture partner with Bui, which is the biggest construction yes. company in Europe, 50-50. We're number two today in France behind uh, WeWork. We have 50,000 square meters. What we should add, where we have something which is extraordinary, we have lobbies, restaurants within our own hotel system, basically empty between 9 o'clock in the morning and 6 o'clock p.m. at night. So we should now combine co-working exercises within our own facilities. And we have 2,700 hotels in Europe only in which we could facilitate co-working cafe, corners, spaces, 
adding to those dedicated co-working spaces we have on dedicated buildings. So you're going to see the network of our core now being made available to the co-working users. And they have Wi-Fi and cafe and printers. All of that exists within the premises. So very little additional cost to basically fuel that system with additional venues. Okay. Final question. You were talking earlier as well about uh, the real estate sale. How are you reinvesting the capital from that? As wisely as I can. So <laughs> I let go a 10% equity return on the real estate. I need to redeploy that cash at 10%. Precisely what I've done yesterday. I just need to get to be better. Those 225 million that we've invested, we're going to be investing in the next one and a half years, is likely to be a four times win when it comes to four years from now. And that four times wins on a 700 million value creation that is probably a 25 to 30 percent IR for my investors. So I am redeploying that cash to make sure I'm going to be basically getting back much more than I would have gotten if I had kept the real estate. Okay. Uh, and I've done it for the last five years. It's going to continue. Happy to be with you. I just need to spend more time with those accounts, which is those basically owning this company. Which Accor Hotel are you staying in in London while you're here? I'm sick of the Savoy. <laughs> <laughs> great food, great service. They were super nice.